So today we're going to be looking at Excel from a sort of introductory perspective, but it's actually part of a overall series that we have. We have a three part series that we're going to be doing basics of Excel, intermediate and advanced. And just to let you know when as part of this webinar, we had lots of feedback and questions. So that's definitely a very lots of interest in this particular topic out there with everyone. So but unfortunately, Excel is, is a huge topic and it's impossible to cover all the details in just one webinar. And this is why we're going to be doing it in a three part series over the next few months. So like I said, any questions we might not be able to handle today, do keep them in the box and we'll be able to possibly apply them to future webinars. So let's jump into it because this is the intro. Let's talk about what exactly is Excel. I'm sure you've heard of it, but basically it's an electronic spreadsheet program. And at its core, it's basically used to store, organize, and manipulate data. Now, this data can be text, it could be numbers, and it could be uh, formulas. And this data goes into uh, workbooks, and workbooks have worksheets in them. And within the worksheets, you have cells, and then we have rows and columns. So that's the sort of summary of the sort of terminology that we're working with with Excel. And I'll, we'll definitely do some demos so that you can see all the terms. You know, people who generally work with financial information, accountants, that kind of stuff, people in accounting, accounts receivable, because obviously it has a lot of strength and capability for doing basic mathematical operations. So it's good at dividing and adding and multiplying. It's also really good at working with values and trying to find values like profits and losses. And it's also really good at calculating more complex formulas like averages, percentages, and number counts. But that's the thing, not just people who are financial or accounting people. There's lots of opportunity for people who in other fields to sort of work with Excel. And actually, it's really interesting. I'll tell you a little story with for me in Excel. Like I, I've been using Microsoft Office products for, for years and years, 10 plus years. But I've also always sort of shied away from Excel because as not being a numbers person, not being a financial person, I often found that I found using Excel complex, I found it kind of hard for my head to kind of wrap myself around how the workbooks and uh, spreadsheets actually worked. And so because I didn't work so much with numbers, I worked more with text, I tended to create my tables and in PowerPoint and Word. And what's been interesting though, is in the past few years, as Microsoft has been evolving all their suites of, of Office, like Word, Microsoft, Word, PowerPoint, and Excel, they've done so much in the last few years to Excel that, that they've definitely changed it from and made it definitely more usable for people like me who are not the financial people and made it easier to use sort of tools and one-click functions to get the functionality of analysis of reporting. And again, I might not be doing sort of complex formulas, but there's definitely for anybody sort of organizing data information, there's lots of capability for you to use within Excel. So let's talk about it and actually dig into and jump into using Excel. So at a high level, let's talk about the navigation of Excel. So like all other current, oh, and just to, sorry, just as a, a context here, I'm going to be using Excel 2016. And like I said, the reason for that is because it's the most recent one. It's one I have on my laptop, but it's also the one that I find my, Microsoft has definitely upped the game in terms of functionality for people who are not financial or numbers people. I find in, in previous, and we will be talking about a lot of the, some of the functionality that has existed over the last few versions. But like I said, this last iteration of the product definitely has made it, and you'll see as we jump to it, really easy click uh, in terms of one click solutions and also made it very familiar from a navigation perspective across all their products. So as you see, if you work with Word or you work with PowerPoint, you'll see that very similar type of approach. You have tabs along the top, then you have each tab has a corresponding ribbon with a whole bunch of buttons and functionalities within that ribbon area. You also have a quick access drop down menu where that you can, that has functions that are more commonly used like print and save and that kind of stuff. But that quick access drop down menu can be customized based on functions that you may use on a more regular basis. Now, what's a little different about Excel is you also have now underneath the ribbon, you have this area called the formula bar. And this is a pretty important area to look at as we sort of start working with Excel because this sort of tells you the background of what's going on in a particular area of your spreadsheet. So 
what you have here is you have a, it's called the name box or cell address. This tells you where your cursor is actually looking on the spreadsheet or we'll call it the worksheet. And it also has here a formula bar and it will tell you based on what cell you are actually activated, what data is in that particular cell. And as I mentioned, this is each particular the whole document that you save is called a workbook and within a workbook you can have many worksheets. So when you create a new workbook it generally just defaults and will give you one new worksheet but you can easily add the plus button and add additional worksheets and like I said there's a whole level of complexity in future editions that and and, and as you get in more into the intermediate and advanced uses of Excel that you can link these worksheets together, you can cross uh, populate data across these worksheets. You can pull data from one worksheet into another. Lots of functionality there. And then we're going to talk about adding data. So there's many different ways that we can add data into Excel. We can actually type data in, you know, typical just using your keyboard. We can copy and paste data from other locations, other workbooks, uh, or worksheet from a table in Word or other documents. Uh, and you can also import it from other sources. And what you see here is a, a bit of a screenshot of some of the options that are available. You can pull data from other files and other workbooks. If you have your um, Excel connected to particular databases in the back end, you can pull data from there. Potentially, you might have some online or cloud services that Excel ha can be connected to. So there's lots of opportunity here. Again, this is more when we're dealing with large data sources, potentially. You might have like customer lists, potentially, in a database, and you might have to pull all of that into Excel. Obviously, you want to do that and not actually type out all your customer addresses and that kind of stuff. So let's actually jump into Excel, and I'll show you a little bit of a walkthrough of the navigation, like I just mentioned, and we'll talk a little bit about adding the data. So I'm just going to pull up my basic getting started. So as I mentioned here, there's the two worksheets and I'm gonna just add a new one to get started. I'm gonna just move my little area here for my uh, webinar out of the way. Okay, so as I mentioned, this was our quick access drop down menu and the toolbar here has an options for saving, opening, printing. Uh, but like I said, this can be all customized under more commands. And again, this is very similar to what you would see in Word, PowerPoint, and any other uh, 2016 Office product. At the top, we have our, our tabs. So this one takes us to the back under file, but we have our tabs. And if I click on each of the tabs, you'll see the ribbons down below. And each of these ribbon areas have a bunch of corresponding buttons or tools or abilities, depending on which tab that you're actually clicking on. And as I mentioned here, this is your sort of cell name of your cell. So this tells me where my cursor is. So the way Excel is sort of uh, set up is you have columns along the top, it's letters, and you have rows along the side, which are numbers. And then as you see, if I put my cursor in any of the locations, you'll see that the name of the cell is listed up here in the top corner. And if I was to add information to this particular cell, so say I'm going to put sales numbers, you will see that now when I go to this, it's A3 is the cell and the data in this particular cell is sales numbers. So the, as I mentioned, the information in cells could be words, it could also be numbers. So I'm gonna just put up here January 2018 and then I'm going to put my sales number of 20. So as I mentioned, there's, it could be numbers and you'll see here B3 is 20. We'll see here A3 is letters, and up here we have a date, and it's see that it's formatted for a particular type of date. And because Excel recognizes as soon as I typed in January 2018, it said, oh, that's a date, and it formatted it a certain way. And we'll show you a little later that there's ways that you can go in and customize all your cells for your data so that you don't have to sit here and keep that you can actually just type in January or February, any of the months in a particular way, any way you want, and it will always format exactly the same way so that your data across your spreadsheet, worksheet is, is always consistent. So I'm gonna apologize in advance. I keep calling it spreadsheets because it's always been spreadsheets to me, but they are worksheets. They're, to me, they're one in the same, so I apologize in advance if I mention that and if you're getting a little confused that they are basically the same thing. So we have, as I mentioned, there's columns, there's rows, and let's jump over to actually adding our data. So I'm going to, this one's gonna to be tough. I'm gonna to go over here to 
some data that I've already entered. So you'll see here, I have at, entered some sales data. I have entered the months of the year as well. And I have a column here or a, a row ready to go in order to, for us to calculate totals of profit. And I also have a column here at the end for us to calculate the totals in terms of total number of sales and total number of overhead costs. And then we could potentially handle the averages as well. I just wanna make sure, okay, yeah, it's adding data. Okay, great. So let me just go here before we start doing formulas, which is my, my favorite part about Excel, let's just make sure that you also know how you can also add in your data. Let's just jump right into formulas because that's honestly the fa my favorite part about Excel. So it all starts with the equal sign. That is the pinnacle of all formulas within Excel. And once you do the equal sign, you basically tell Excel, I wanna do a formula. Now you can type these formulas manually, or as I mentioned before, part of the reason I never used Excel in the past is because a lot of it was very manual, but now they have all these great functionalities to help you build your formulas. Now, the one thing I'm gonna mention, I'll show you is the one confusing element is there's actually multiple ways to do exactly the same thing. So that was the one element about Excel that I, I, hey, I love the fact that they've made it easier, but as you kind of go through, you will find there'll be areas that's like, wait a minute, isn't this the same place to do this and that? So you'll find that there's, a, but you'll see that also across all Microsoft Office, like in Word, if you right click in the drop down menu, there'll be options to copy paste as well as up on the top. So I get it, but you'll see, I'll show you here what, what I'm talking about when we actually go into the spreadsheet. So here are some options. So I want to total all our sales numbers across here. So let's start by telling Excel that I wanna do a formula. So I'm gonna type in the equal sign, great. So I'm telling them I wanna do a formula. What do I wanna do? Well, I wanna add all these together. So I'm gonna type in sum. So what you'll see is as you start typing in whatever you think your formula needs to be, Excel will try to find similar ones that they already have within Excel. It has, Excel has over 400 different formulas embedded within it that can help you. So there's ones that are obviously more simple, like adding and dividing and, and multiplying and, and subtraction, but it can go up to very complex sort of engineering, mathematical type of equations. So once I've typed it in, now I can put my bracket and say, okay, I want to add. Now here's where it gets interesting. If you've never used Excel before, you would think that if you were gonna calculate something, you would be typing in 12 plus 12. So basically I'm typing in these rows and I'm gonna add them all together, which is good in theory and that should give you a total. But the problem with that is that if you ever change any of these numbers, then this will not change because it's core, the actual data. So you see, if I actually click in it and I go up here to the formula bar, I know that even though it's totaled it to 24, the actual formula of the data in this cell is 12 plus 12. Now, so that's the problem if you actually do it manual. This is why using formulas with cell calculations. So you're telling Excel, do this calculation with the cell. Don't worry about the actual data in the cell, just do the calculation, the formula with the cell. And that gives you the flexibility to change the data and hence you not have to change the formula every single time. So let me show you how that works. So I'm gonna type in equals and sum and I'm gonna add a bracket. Now I could type in, so this particular cell here is B4. So I could type in B4. So you'll see as I typed in B4, it is now highlighted this one in blue. So I'm gonna type in plus, oops, plus, and then I'm going to, what is the one beside it? C4, C4, and I'm gonna do plus. So I could keep doing that. You gotta get the point over and over and over again. Now that would take a whole lot of time, especially if you had like a gigantic worksheet with lots of columns and stuff. So this is where Excel's made it much, much easier for you. So I could do the same thing, equal sum bracket, and I could just drag across. And then I can close the parentheses or I could just press enter and great. And you'll see that the total is there 231. But when I put my cursor on it on the cell, you'll see that the actual formula is sum B4 all the way to M4. And that's your total there. Pretty cool. Now, what I was saying about the fact that there's multiple ways to do this and where it gets a little bit confusing is 
sums, uh, averages, there's certain formulas are the most used across all spreadsheets. And they've, obviously Microsoft has done lots of studies to figure out what are the most commonly used functions. So because they've recognized this, they've put some of these functions sort of in a one click type of approach. So you'll notice if I go here along the home ribbon on the top, there's an option called auto sum. If I go here and I just double click auto sum, look, I got the same amount. So Excel basically did a little bit of artificial intelligence. It decided based on its format, where it is in the cell and the data that was beside it, that it should total all this data. Now, again, sometimes it doesn't get it right and you have to actually go in and play around with this, the, the information. But I love the fact that at one click, I could put my cursor here. I could go here to auto sum, double click, and it will go across and, and do the formula for me. Now I'm gonna just delete that. It also, if you have, there's a drop down option here. And these are some others functionality that Microsoft has found it's very commonly used. So they made it one click. So say I wanted to just one click average. So it won't, oh, it doesn't want, it doesn't recognize the average. It wants to total these amounts. So it wants me to actually highlight it, great. So now it gave me, so that's where it, sometimes it's intelligent, but sometimes you have to give Excel a little bit of help because it doesn't recognize the numbers. But really by one or two clicks, I was able to kind of get the, now it's totaling all this information across all these columns to give me the average. Now say I wanted to do subtraction, something that's not in this auto sum. Oh, sorry, I did want to mention, just to show you that this also exists in another place. So this auto sum, if you go under here under formulas, oh look, Auto sum, again, same thing. Oops, don't put that in there. So I think it's fascinating that it's literally in three different places. Um, but but again, I like the fact that, you know, if you don't forget where it is in one place, you could easily find it in another location. And I also wanna mention while we're here, in this particular tab of formulas, this is where you'll find, as I mentioned, the 400 plus formulas that Microsoft has added to Excel. So you'll see, recently used so if there's things that you commonly use they're great they're easily one click and then basically they have them sort of divided based on functionality you have text related ones math and trigonometry reference related ones time and date sort of functionality so lots of different uh formulas here as well but again like i was saying the auto uh sum now the problem is is we don't have we don't have subtraction so we're gonna have to actually do this uh formula on our own. So to do this though, and save ourselves some time, we can create the formula once and then copy it across. And that's one thing I really love about Excel is now again, sometimes it, the intelligence isn't right on, but generally I'd say 90% of the time it's quite on, on, on top of it. So let's get started with this equation. I want to do sales minus overhead to give me my profit. So like in any time to tell Excel, let's start a formula. I'm going to do equal sign. Now in this case, I want to subtract. So I could do subtract, or what I could do as well is I could type in, take this number before, and I'm gonna minus, and I'm gonna press the next cell underneath, and you'll see B4 minus B5 equals seven, great. So now I have my formula. You'll see when I go on the cell, there is my formula up here as well. Now I could sit here and do it again and again and again and again all the way across, but what I love the fact is that you can copy the actual formula, not the actual data. So when I right click on here, I can copy. And if I go over here, I can choose to paste the value or I can paste the formula. Super cool. Now watch, if I grab the edge of this cell and move it across, Excel will copy that same formula all the way across all those columns. Super cool from a time-saving perspective, for sure. So those are just some of the, and that, that applies both with columns and rows, the ability to sort of drag and drop up formulas all the way across. Now, again, if this, I can't go here because here we're actually talking about total. So we need to work on a different type of equation for this part of the worksheet. All right, so let's jump back into the presentation here. 
So once you've actually sort of put a worksheet together, it can be, you know, if it's not very much data, it's kind of easy to look at, I guess. But if you are actually working with lots of data and lots of rows and lots of columns, really hard on the eyes, especially if your information is not formatted well. So Microsoft has lots of capabilities. So let me just go here to another spreadsheet. Here's one. Now this one has many, 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 many rows. So to make things more interesting, but what we've done here is we've created some coloring on the different columns. And the way we do that is I just highlight the whole column by going to the top and clicking down. And I can go here to the fill color. And like this, I can change it to be blue. I could make it whatever color I'd like. And say, for example, I want to make this part, this line underneath this row much bolder so that people understand that this is sort of the titles and this is the data below. If I highlight this particular row, there's a drop down menu right here on the home tab. And if I drop down, it gives me all these options for borders. So this is the board where I can control the border around the cell. I can control the border around many cells. I can control the border around a piece of information. So that would be like an outside border. But in this case, what I want to do is I'm highlighting the row I want and I'm going here to thick bottom border. So I'm going to click on that and you'll see that it's added this darker line. Now I could do that again anywhere else in the information. Here, let's grab some other data here so that you could see how this looks like when you're actually formatting a spreadsheet to look better. So here's a budget information. So we could have left it all, you know, black and white, but by adding, sort of highlighting the yellow, we're able to highlight particular quarters that we want people to look at. You'll see here as well that you can add borders at the top and the bottom of certain sections, certain rows to help highlight the information. Now say for example, you know, you wanted to start from scratch. You, you put some rows in, you put some borders in and you didn't like it. What you do is just select the whole spreadsheet or worksheet. And I'm gonna go here to the drop down again and we're gonna say no borders. And that gets rid of everything. And then we can get started again in terms of adding our borders. We could add borders at the top and at the bottom. We could add fill color to make it more bold and a different sort of color coding. Again, just to help the information really pop out. You can also play around with the fonts. So it has whatever Calibri or is the sort of um, automatic font. But if you have a particular company font that you want to use, you can highlight your information. And just like in any other Microsoft program within the home tab you have all the functionality for changing fonts you can change I also I also can right click on the text and I have a little sort of drop down of changing the sizing the coloring whatever I'd like in terms of that information I find it really helpful especially when you're doing worksheets with financials to create a nice bold filler at the bottom for uh for total so that people can really, really clearly see what the final, and also I find adding really clear coloring at the top so that you can see what your column headings are or where, what your row are. I find that really helpful. So once you've sort of added your data and you're working, you have a worksheet with usually looking sort of like a table of data. Sometimes, obviously, if, if the data is not very complex, you can look at the information that way and it's not a problem. So let's take a look at that. So for example, here, the sales data, this isn't that complex to look at, right? Like, you know, we're really looking at four quarters. We're looking at four different reads. The numbers aren't that big. So from a, a presentation perspective, you know, possibly from an analysis perspective too, it wouldn't be too hard to do that from this, in this type of information. But what if you have a lot more information? What if you have like lots of information and you want to see it. And this is where charts definitely help visualize your information so that you can analyze it more effectively. So the way we do that is, so here's one I already created, but I'm just going to delete that for now and just show you how I did that. So here's some sales data. Now for our, our meeting, we want to sort of compare our sales based on the different regions and our different products. Now, when you're creating a chart, you can decide and you can tell Excel what values, which rows and columns you want to include in the chart. It doesn't necessarily have to be everything. So I'm going to get started because I don't want, I don't find it valuable 
to add the totals into the the chart because we're doing for this example we're doing a comparison analysis so the totals aren't really going to help us in this instance we really want to look at products and regions so i'm just going to go here and i'm going to highlight the products and the regions and then i'm going to go along the top to insert and then we have the option here of all these charts there's a whole sort of area now a great addition to again 2016 is in the past this always existed you could always go in here and pick a chart and there's different drop down menus there's bar chart column charts bar charts pie charts whatever you'd like but feature with 2016 is now powerpoint has or sorry, excel has this recommended charts i love this because one of the most commonly asked questions people ask is what chart because there's so many different charts what chart should i use to better best show my data so the fact that it has some intelligence, it will kind of look at your data and just, you know what, as much as you might like pie charts, that's probably not the best way to display this type of data in a pie chart. Probably a bar chart is a more effective or a column chart or stack bar is the best way to show it. So I'm going to decide, you know what, this is going to give us a better sense of units per for the product. So I'm going to go with that one. Great. And I love the fact one click and they have gener Excel has generated a beautiful chart for me. Now I can go in and do some customizing. Now when I actually have my chart selected, you'll notice that a little tab appears up here at the top called chart tools. Very similar again, like Word, PowerPoint, similar functionality. So, but you see it disappears when I'm not on the chart. So if I select the chart, it comes back again. And what it tells me is I have two tabs here that are specifically for helping me format my chart. So there's design, so change the color scheme. So say I don't like this color. Oops, I can change the actual colors and make it all one color or multicolored. They also have some just um, stylistic formatting. Say you want it to be sort of this has like a grade background, some shadowing. This one has a more 3D beveled effect. This one has a sort of sort of graded shade. So we have some functionality to add some you know different look or style to your particular chart. You can also play around with adding. So I can go in here and select each particular bar and actually change the color manually. So say I have a color shade for my brand, I can go in and enter those colors and make sure that my chart matches my branding colors. I can go in also and change the, say I want to change the title to sales data. I can also make decisions about how big or small, say that I'm finding this a little bit too small to read. So I wanna make this a little bit bigger. Say I wanna, I don't, you know what, we have the values here. I can actually move them manually. So they're not on the actual bar. Making it very specific, but say, you know what, we're gonna look at the actual num bars and we don't wanna actually look at the value. So we're not at getting any value from this chart at the bottom. So I'm just gonna delete it because it's taking up space. So there's lots of sort of format, um, a functionality that you can do to play around with your chart tools here for under the formatting or under the design as well. And while you're going at it, then I, because it's connected, you'll see as I click stuff in the actual chart, you'll see it corresponding with the data in the actual worksheet. And that's because if I go ahead and change this, it will change it in the sales data as well. So that's something to keep in mind. All right tables now this is an aspect of of excel that i think a lot of people don't really recognize because they're used to doing tables in powerpoint and word and they and then sometimes people they perceive their worksheet as a table but it's actually not until you actually click on the button saying make this a table excel does not know funny enough even though it looks like a table that this is a table that should be functioning as a table. And, and because it doesn't know, it can't, it doesn't offer up all the tools and functionalities that it happens to have to help you format your, your tables. So let's jump into some information here. Let's, let's find, all right. So you see here, lots and lots of data, lots of data, but it's, it's literally just data in a worksheet. It's not actually a table. So if I want to make this a table and tell Excel, hey, I want, this, you to recognize this as a table and, and hence give me all the tools that are available, I'm going to select all the data and I'm going to go here to insert and I'm going to select table. And because I've selected all of it, it's going to ask you, where do you want your data for your table? Yep, this is it. 
yep, it's just going to say that it's it's very big. Yes, I know that. Because what it's trying to do is it's trying to create, oh, it's big data. It's trying to create my table beside my information. Let's just go back to here for a second. I'll just talk a little bit more about some of the table tools while that loads itself up. Once you've actually selected it as a table, just similar to chart tools, similar to Word, similar to PowerPoint, when you actually select it, you have these a little tab that comes up above the tab ribbon that says table tools. And that generates these new tabs that exist for designing and formatting. And you'll see this looks very fam familiar to Word, to PowerPoint, in terms of helping you one click format your table in terms of adding banded rows adding uh you can see you can make the header row all you know one click a uh, different sort of color you can make the last column the first column lots of stuff like that oh here we go it's finally it's finally caught up so i wanted to move that over let's just undo that for a second and hop over here thank you all right I'm gonna not select it. I'm just gonna click here and I'm gonna to go to insert and I'm gonna to go to table. And it's gonna say, okay, let's do a table. Oh, it's just doing a tabletop. Okay, all the data here. I need something a bit smaller. Sorry guys, let's go here. Table, insert. Yes, thank you, hallelujah. So now you see here, it automatically, because it recognized it as a table, made some decisions for you. It decided, okay, I'm going to do some formatting, but it can go, you can go and change that. You can change the colors. You can even put a whole new style. Maybe you don't like these colors. Maybe you want your own colors. You can go in and do that. I love the fact that at one click, it can kind of go in and you can decide, I want the first column to be have a different be bolded so it's easier to see i love the fact that it's you know you and one click i can kind of make some decisions on how the information looks and feels and especially then if you're copying and pasting this into like another presentation like powerpoint i love the fact you can do all that formatting here without having to do that formatting again in another program and application so let's talk a little bit about viewing worksheets because again when you're dealing with a small amount of information not a big deal when you're dealing with lots of information it can get a little bit unruly trying to work and manage around all these different uh, different rows and columns. So within the view version, uh, view tab of Excel, there's some great functionality to help you sort of look at your information. So let's take a look about the freezing area. So here's my gigantico list of data. And again, I could sort of scroll through and try to get to this, the bottom of the info. Maybe if I get down here, I'm like, oh, I forgot. What's this column for? what's this column for? I can't remember. I have to keep going back to the top and finding out what the titles are for these particular columns. So I can actually freeze that row and say, don't move that row, just move all the information underneath it. So if I highlight that row and I go along the top to view, there's an option called freeze panes. So I can, and it'll tell you right there, I can freeze panes, keep the rows and columns visible with the rest, freeze the top row, freeze the column. So say you could do it this way, you could freeze all the information. And then if for, you know, I'd have to make this, these columns really big to get you, give you the idea. But see, if I scroll this way, you see that the column here does not move. And I can do the same thing, freeze top row. So as I scroll my information, you'll see that the top row always stays the same. So this is just really, really handy, again, when you're dealing with lots of different information. There's another sort of functionality here that I wanted to mention called split. Again, when you're dealing with these long, long log worksheets with lots of data, and say, you know, you want to do some sort of comparison at the same time, you have the ability to split the data in two and look at it. So say I'm going to go down here and split it in, in half. I'm going to go here to row 100. And I'm going to click the option here to split. What you'll see is a little line appears along the middle of my worksheet. And now when I, oh, where'd it go? I lost it. There it is. Okay, here it is. I'm going to go here to split. Oh, it's getting confused because of my, uh, because I have my, squeeze, uh, my freeze planes. Let's do unfreeze this. So actually, because I have my freeze pane on, is that very interesting? It wants to do both at the same time, but you'll see I can scroll through this information here independently 
of this information. So this is super handy. Like say, you know, you were looking for different records and you wanted to define and compare different records. Again, I've seen some people have literally one spreadsheet, worksheet open, jumping to another worksheet, back and forth, back and forth, when really you can have all the same data in one place. And then you basically sort of just, like I said, scroll through it and, and slice it and actually look at the data. And you're not really not doing anything to the data, you're just looking at it differently. So again, this the freeze pay, this freeze pane is very helpful and also the split very helpful when looking at your data. All right, let's talk a little bit about saving and printing, just because printing in itself at Excel can be a little bit of an exercise in patience sometimes, because again, if you have a very small worksheet, not a big deal. But when you're dealing with very large files, like this one, for example, with lots and lots of data, or where's this one, another one that I had here that was very wide, uh, this budget one. So it's how do you fit this all on one page, for example, say you wanted to hand it out to your team and you didn't want it going across many pages. How do you do that? So first off, let's talk about saving. So I'm going to go here to the file tab and this takes us to the backstage view, which is very similar like all other Microsoft products. And I'm going to go here to the save option, which it's already saved, but I'm going to go here to save as. And similar to other products, other Microsoft Office products, I can decide on uh, the name, where it goes, I can decide whether I save it on the cloud or whether I save it on this particular PC. Um, but I'm also, in this case, I'm also going to just go here to print. So in the print uh, option here, you'll see that, and what's interesting too is sometimes you might, say you want to send, you know, some financials to someone, but you want to spread, send the spreadsheet, you want to spread, send like a PDF, you can also print to PDF. So it functions very similar to a printer, but what you'll see right now is, uh-oh, my budget is cut off and it's going across three pages. That's not very convenient at all. So you have some options here. You can change the orientation, make it wider. You can also make some decisions on whether you want to just print the active sheet or the entire wor workbook or particular selection that you want to make. In this case, I'm going to just do the active sheet. We can also make the mark, like you see right now, the margins are pretty big. So maybe I want to make the margins a little bit more narrow. Ooh, it's still not quite fitting the way I'd like. So we have some options here to go to page setup. So you can actually get to this again, many places, but I find it easier here in this print option uh, section of Excel. And it will open up this little box that gives you options. So you can adjust so you can shrink this actual whole worksheet down so it fits on one page by or fits it by one page wide by one page tall. I also love the fact that you can add a header or a footer type of thing. So say you want to change the title. You want it to say budget uh, projections and maybe you want to add something like confidential. I love the fact that it, see, so now it's shrunk down my whole little budget sheet onto one page and it's added in my header and my footer. So I don't have to go and do anything else anywhere else. It's all done here. And then I can either, again, print it to my printer or print it PDF, which will basically make it into a PDF file that I can then send either with a watermark or with some sort of password protect. And we're going to get a little bit into the security part of how you can do that as well with Excel. So sharing and security. So we're there's two different aspects in terms of your security and passwords within Excel. You have the ability to um, share the workbook with other people and put passwords on it. So if that's the case, that would mean that if, say you were saving it um, in a, say in a, a network drive somewhere with other people, you can uh, add a password so to open it. So that's an overall our security. So say you just want control over who opens your entire workbook. This is how you would do it in the save option. What I also really love about Excel is the ability to control security around actual cells or worksheets. And there's two, two ways to kind of look at it, which is kind of interesting. And, and just think about sort of the applications that how this could apply. So we're say we're, let's look at employees. So here we're looking at some employee data. You know, we have salaries, that's kind of confidential. Now you'll see that when I highlight new salary, this actually has a whole calculation in here. 
Now, say I wanted to share this spreadsheet with a coworker and I want them to make some changes, but I don't want them to change the, make any changes to this particular um, equation. Because if they do, it'll just mess up this entire workbook. So I can actually lock down content or I can lock down structure. So there's two ways. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go along the top. All right, so under review, we have the option to protect the sheet and protect the workbook. So the worksheet is, so say for example, I want to make sure that no one changes people's salaries, you know, like go into your friend's salaries and make some changes. So I can go here to this particular column, select the whole thing and click protect sheet. And I can add a password here. And what that will do is that will protect the whole sheet, but I can make some decisions. So I can say, whoever, so whatever, I'm just going to PW, so I don't forget that, don't forget your password. Very hard to get it back, note to self. Okay, so PW is my password, so I don't forget. You can, you're basically protecting the whole sheet, meaning they can't, they can look at it, but they can't change anything. But then from there, you can make some tweaks and say, okay, you can select lock cells. Maybe you don't want them. Maybe you want them to select unlock cells. Maybe you want them the ability to insert information. Maybe you want them to be able to edit content. So you might want to have some decisions of what you want to allow people to do and not do. So like I said, the sheet is more like locking down the content. Like you don't want people to actually change the information versus protecting the workbook. Now protecting, even if you highlight it, you'll see, oops, Keep others from making structural changes to your workbook, such as moving, deleting, or adding sheets. So here's how this could work. Say, for example, I wanted to share this spreadsheet with my coworkers, and we wanted to talk about hiring dates, we want to talk about years, but I didn't want people to see people's salaries. So what I want to do is I'm going to hide this uh, column. So I'm going to right click on the column and go to hide. And I also don't want my coworkers to see everybody's new salaries. So I'm gonna hide that one. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to protect workbook and I'm gonna put a password. So now what happens is say, because I've, I've hidden these particular columns, they're hidden, I can click, I can look at the data, but say I'm like, hey, I know there's supposed to be a column here on salaries, I want to unhide it, but I can't because it's been password protected. So that's the sort of way that you kind of can get away with, say you had a, um, a great example, a friend of mine uses this all the time, is you spend all this time creating really complex formulas that goes to other sheets and other places, and you definitely don't want people to mess around with that. So what they do is they actually create those in certain columns and lock that all down and protect the workbook and then people can't actually unhide that. You can also do it with the actual full worksheets. So say for example, I had here under my employee data, I wanted to share this whole workbook with people, but I don't want them to see this particular tab. I could hide this tab. Right now, again, I'm locked out, I gotta undo this. There we go. So now I have access to do this kind of stuff. So I can actually hide this particular whole workbook or worksheet and again, then protect the workbook, PW, PW. And by doing that, then the next person coming around might want to unhide and you'll see everything is basically locked down. I cannot, I can look at the data, but I can't actually go into those hidden areas. So again, this is a really handy feature. I find when you're working and sharing your spreadsheet or worksheets with other people, and especially when the data per se is not confidential, but you don't want people mucking around with your data. Super handy. Oh, and let's talk a little bit about sharing before we get into some of the features of 2018, so or 2016. So we have this option here in the top right to share. And before you can share, you must put it up in the cloud. And once you put it up in the cloud, you basically can, once you've added, have it all up in the cloud, you can invite people and add their email addresses and you can share it with them. You can add a message, you can limit, you know, if they can see stuff, that they can view stuff, that kind of stuff. 
So very handy in terms of sharing information. Say you want to share a spreadsheet, but when it when you're in that case, you're sharing all of it. And that would be the case where you'd want to share it with someone, but then put in some protections if you want to limit what they can see or what they can access or change. So something to keep in mind. All right, so before we finish off, covered lots of information. I just want to jump into a few other features that Excel 2016 has that we, we don't have time to go deeply into today, but I do want to mention just because they're super cool. Quick analysis tool. This has existed for in previous versions, but they've definitely kind of upped the game in this most recent version. So I'm just going to quickly bring up just a spreadsheet of sorts. So basically they have exactly what it did, a quick analysis tool. Excel looks at your data. If you highlight a chunk of data and this little new box will come up in the bottom corners called quick analysis. And when I click on it, it basically gives me options that I can do totaling. So say I wanted to do some uh, basic totals and stuff. I want to do some formatting. I wanted to add some color charts. I wanted to add bars values to make it easier to see what the totals are. Say I wanted to just highlight those greater than a certain amount. Okay, say I want to just highlight the cells that are greater than 50. Okay, great. Wait, I've had too much stuff going on, so it's kind of hard to see. But I just love the fact that with this quick access toolbar or tool here, you can one click, you can create a, uh, a chart very quickly. Now, again, you don't have all the same functionality that you have in the top with the ribbon. But again, for just quick and dirty getting stuff done, I love that that they've added this quick analysis tool. And like I said, and it's quick analysis, not very, this doesn't work really well, I've noticed, with really long pieces of, of data, like long, long, uh, uh, lots of rows, lots of columns, maybe not as 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 effect, but definitely was sort of quick, quick and dirty, like uh, table like we have here, very easy for formatting information. We'll also talk a little bit about some of the new charts that Excel has added. So I'll just quickly show them to you here. They're super cool. So we're going to look at some of the charts here under insert. So some of the new ones that they've added is they've added a, it's called a tree map. So what a tree map does is it sort of creates a, say like a visual representation of your data in a sort of color box perspective. Again, depending on the type of data you have, this may or may not be effective. They've also added, they've added some new charts in terms of recommended charts. Oh, I need to pick some data first. He's confused. Okay, let's go to all charts. So the new ones that have been added is they've added waterfall. They've added tree map. They've added this box and whiskers. Again, I'm not a big financial person, so I'm not really sure where this would be used, but I'm sure for people who find it um, useful would find that really, really handy. And they've also, like I said, the, the tree map one in particular, if you, oh, and the sunburst, I found really cool. Now, again, if the type of data, you need to have the right type of data to use these types of charts, because if not, they really aren't, you know, and that's why I really like the fact that Excel now has this recommended charts, because like I said, even though you might think the tree map's really cool, it may not work with the actual data that you are using that particular day. Let's talk about, oh, 3D power maps. This feature is so super cool. I'll admit, complex, not the easiest to work with, but for applications where if you're in your business and you have latitude and longitude addresses and you want to strategically map your data, your sales, your customers, and you happen to have that those locational data, the 3D power map feature is just like game changing in terms of that, you know, like I said, being able to visualize your content on a map of the world or you can even import your own maps and like but again i would i'll tell you right now it's not the easiest to use i'm not even gonna sh i'll show you where it is but like i said you need to have the right kind of data uh in order for it to, it's right here under insert under 3d map and it will open up its own little box but like i said it doesn't work with any data it needs to work it works with latitude and longitude and address data it needs that it needs to recognize that so that's something that's a webinar in itself but i do want to mention it because i just thought for people who are in the type of business where you have that type of data this could be honestly a, a great tool for for marketing sales planning that kind of stuff and last but not least, pivot tables. Pivot tables are life altering, let me tell you. Pivot tables have existed for a while, but 
like I said, like anything else, they Microsoft has definitely upped their game in terms of how pivot tables work and and their functionality and how how much easier they are to work with. So I'm just going to close out of here. Now, so we have some data. So in a nutshell, I'll just read it here. Pivot tables, they take your data and they summarize it. Now you could do that like we did with our tables here. You know, we, we could go here and do grand totals. We can do totals there. We could do that kind of stuff. But, oh, actually, let's look at some more complex data. I think this would look better with this data. Here we go. Let's close out of that and erase that. All right. So here we have some pretty complex furniture sales data. And so this is a lot harder to analyze. So we've done summaries. We know items. We know totals. We know dates. We know regions. But this is a lot of information to kind of go through and try to figure out how did we do in our sales. So this is where the pivot tables is like one click basically reporting. And then I'll show you what you can do with it. So, and, it, and that's, again, I'm going to show you how the intelligence works. So I'm going to go up here under insert. So we have the option for pivot tables and love it, 2016. Now we have the option for recommended pivot tables. So let me just jump into pivot tables and then understand that now Microsoft Excel will actually help you pick the best format of, of pivot tables. But let's start from scratch. So we're going to ask for a range. And so I'm going to say, OK, all of that. Give me all of it. Pivot table. All of it. OK, it doesn't want these. OK, just give me these columns then. There we go. Perfect. So before you freak out, your data is still there. It's in another tab at the bottom. So when you create a pivot table, Excel automatically generates a new worksheet for you. We'll call it here, worksheet, and we'll call it pivot two. And I'm going to just click here in this placeholder. So what we got here is here is Microsoft has gone through your data in that uh, worksheet that we had and decided based on the columns, the rows, and has sort of sorted all the data. So we'll hear this is the data that's in that particular worksheet. So I can make some decisions on what I see. So say I want to look at regions. And I'm going to click on regions. And I want to look at date. Oh, but I don't want to, I just want to look at years. I don't want to look at quarters. I just want to look at years. And I want to look at cost. So you'll see just by doing those few clicks, I don't have to look at all my data. I can look at a summary of my data. And as I clicked on that, Microsoft made some decisions on where this data should show. So you'll see here we have columns, rows, and values. Now, what I love about pivot tables and exactly its very name, pivot, is the ability to very quickly on the fly pivot or change how you look at the data. So say I don't, you know what, I don't want the years as a row. I want the years as a column. So you see in one click, now I'm able to see my regions and how many sales they've done per year. Oh, say I want to change that around. Okay, years comes back to row and regions become columns. Same thing. Very quick, easy drag and drop. Say I want to add more content and more information, more data. And I can, again, just decide where this data is. And it's awesome is the fact that it also collapses it down so that you can look at it summarized like it is right now or expanded if you actually want to see the data. But in terms of from a, like a, so you see this little pivot area disappears, but when I click on the data, it appears again. At a, like really a few clicks, I can customize a report and make some decisions on what data I'm looking at. Super cool. The, the possibilities with this are endless. And just so that you know, though, so pivot tables are kind of like a beast in itself and very similar to all the rest. When you're activated in the pivot chart or pivot table view, you'll have the pivot tables tool along the top ribbon. And you'll see these additional features to analyze. So you have some features here to clear the data and move the data. And I also want to quickly mention, though, pivot charts. So pivot charts are important because they are connected to the actual pivot table. So if I was to, so you see here, here's my table, here's my chart and here's my table. If I change the data around and I add 
product or customer, you'll see that it's going to start adding that data to my particular table. See, it adds it here to my chart as well. As I play around with the data, it is connected to the chart. So that only happens here in pivot view, just to let you know, this doesn't happen with insert with these regular charts. So regular charts and pivot charts do not play well together. So that's just something to keep in mind. Anywho, lots of capabilities with pivot charts. I, like I said, we just literally touched the surface of what you could do with them. So we're gonna take some questions, but I did wanna let you know that Thank you again for joining us. Hope you found this useful and we'll be going in a little bit deeper for our next Excel uh, training. Great. Well, I really hope that you guys found this webinar helpful and I hope you'll join us for our next one.